Hey what's up guys, it's Dark Arm Duelist and today doing some Sword Soul Test Hands. So I'm really excited to do this for you guys because this deck is an extremely awesome deck that is hands down one of the best decks of the format because you summon out all sorts of extremely powerful synchro monsters to help you control the board and go in for games. So without further ado guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell in there so you can come part of the notification squad and definitely check out the Patreon down in the description below for all those awesome rewards like in your name, screw every single video, getting assigned cards in the mail and even getting to request a deck profile every single month you're a patron along with test hands. So without further ado, let's get straight on into this. So this deck is super fun to be able to play because it's Synchro Summons, which is my favorite summoning mechanic in the entire game. Because it's really cool just to be able to use a non-tuner and a tuner monster and add those levels together to see what really awesome monster that you can make. And definitely comment down below what your favorite summoning mechanic is in the entire game. But you guys know it's dad rule number one that we gotta pile shuffle up the deck so that we don't brick. But this deck is just really, really consistent in what it can do because you can summon out all sorts of crazy powerful synchro monsters like Baron de Fleur, the Grand Master Sword Soul, and you have some other really powerful tech monsters that you can actually summon out of the extra deck. Which if you guys would like to check out the deck profile, as always with every test hand video, it is down in the description down below. Let's go ahead and shuffle up the deck and see what we can do for our first test hand. So we're going to go ahead and draw into a copy of Long Yoon and a copy of Mo Yi. This is already pretty good because you can use both of these cards to help you go in for two synchro plays because this deck pretty much makes one card synchros, which is really nice. We then draw into a copy of our Incredible Ecclesia, a copy of Taie, which we've gotten all the Sword Soul card monsters in our hand, and then finally an Infinite Impermanent. So this is actually a pretty decent hand because we have a hand trap, we have a copy of Ecclesia, that we can bring back later. We have our copy of our Taie, Moi, and our copy of Long Yoon. So you have some really good plays in this hand. So you can basically just start off by normal summoning out the copy of the Moi. Moi is a great normal summon in this deck because it has the ability that if this card is normally special summon, you just reveal a sword soul in your hand and then you get to special summon out a token. Now the really neat thing about all your Sword Soul monsters is, is when they summon out a token, the token is a Tuner, Water, Level 4, Zero Attack, and Zero Defense. And it's also a Worm type monster, so it can help you go in for some really good plays. And when you use them as Synchro materials, you get different effects. For example, with your copy of Moi, you get to draw a card. Long Yoon, you get to inflict 1200 points of damage to the opponent. And your copy of Taie lets you send a Sword Soul or a Worm monster from your deck to the graveyard if they're used as Synchro materials, which is really neat because you get some really good pluses. So what we're going to do is immediately use the Moi and the copy of the token on our side of the field to go into a copy of the Grand Master. Now this is a really neat play because you can actually chain block it so that you can get a search because the copy of your Grand Master says, hey, when I'm Synchro Summon, you get to add a Sword Soul card from your deck to your hand. The copy of Moi says, hey, you get to draw a card. So you can use this card as Chainlink 1 and your copy of Moi as Chainlink 2. We're going to go ahead and shuffle up the deck really quick and then we're going to go ahead and draw a card for the effect of the Mogi. So we're gonna go ahead and draw into a Sacred uh, sacred Summit, which is really, really good, because that's usually what I actually summon, or actually search off the copy of Grandmaster. And then we get to search a Sword Soul card, which I'm actually gonna search from the deck a copy of Sword Soul Blackout, because that's a really good search from the deck to be able to use with the next Synchro Monster that we're actually gonna summon to the field. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and use the copy of Long Yoon in my hand to be able to discard the Taie from my hand, to be able to special summon it to my side of the field, and also put an additional uh, token on the field that is a level 4 tuner monster. So we're going to go ahead and synchro summon with these two monsters on our side of the field to go ahead and get rid of them. You're going to do 1200 points of damage to the opponent, which can really help you in time against the opponent, to summon out our copy of the Supreme Sovereign. Now the Supreme Sovereign is really, really good because this card has the ability that for each banished card this card gains 100 attack and defense and monsters that your opponent controls lose 100 attack and events and if this card would be destroyed by a card effect then you can banish a card from you manage a card from the graveyard instead and if a card is banished except during the damage step then you can banish a card each from both your opponent's field and graveyard which is really really good because your copy of blackout says hey pop a card on the field, and then basically Icarus attack for this deck. That you get to pop a card on your field and then two cards on your opponent's side of the field, but they don't have to actually pop your card because you can target your copy of your Supreme Sovereign to be able to use its effect to also turn a copy of Blackout into basically 
a um, a pop two and a banished one from field and grave, which is just absolutely insane. You're starting to see why this deck is tier one. But at this point, we're going to go ahead and use the copy of the Sword Soul Sacred Summit to be able to revive back the card that we discarded, which is the copy of Taie. Now, Taie has the ability that basically you put, banish a Sword Soul card from the graveyard, which is really nice to just be able to banish any Sword Soul card or a Worm Monster from the grave to be able to special summon out a Sword Soul token. So I'm going to go ahead and banish the copy of Moyi because I can get it back later with some other plays. But we're going to go ahead and put another token on our side of the field. Now, the really interesting thing is we have not locked ourselves into worm monsters for the turn because Ashuna actually locks us into those, which is a 10 E card that we're playing in the deck. So we're going to go ahead and synchro for a level eight synchro monster, which you have a bunch of different ones that you can actually summon from the extra deck. Now, if we had a 10 E monster in the graveyard, like a copy of Adahara, you could actually summon out a copy of Baxia to be able to use its effect to revive back the Adahara and then go in for something like a copy of your Chalfang. Now let's actually step back really quickly before we summon out that token, keep the copy of the Moyi in the graveyard and I'm actually going to set up a really neat play that I'm actually going to banish the copy of Long Yoon instead, summon out the token, and then Synchro Summon because I actually saw a really neat card that we're playing in the extract that I want to summon, and it's actually going to be a copy of Dragite. Now, the reason I actually banished the copy of the Long Yoon instead is because if Moyi's in the graveyard, it's a water monster. So this gives you a spell and trap negate along with a monster negate on your side of the field, which is really, really good. So at this point, you have the effect of your Taie that lets you send a Sword Soul or a Worm Monster from your deck to the graveyard. So we're going to go ahead and send from our deck to the graveyard a copy of Adahara. Now, Adahara is going to set us up for later plays to be able to go in to grab back from our Banish Pile the copy of Long Yoon to go in for an additional monster, which is really, really good. But it has the ability that you can banish this card from the graveyard if you control a face-up non-effect monster. So we're going to have to get another monster on the field that's a 10 e monster to be able to use that effect. So we're going to go ahead and shuffle up the deck. And then at this point, we can go ahead and set to our side of the field, the copy of Blackout and the copy of Infinite Impermanence. Now, the really neat thing about this field is you have a spell and trap negate. You have the effect of the Grand Master that's going to give you basically a effect veilerish effect that you can manage a sword soul monster or a worm monster from your hand or graveyard and then target an effect monster on the field and negate its effects, which is really good to give you that effect, which is one negate, two negates and three negates on your side of the field with also a double pop, a banish from field and a banish from graveyard, which is really, really good because basically you're handling one, two, three, four, five, six cards on the field, which is really, really good. I really like this deck. It's super fun to be able to play. And this is pretty standard for a field. The Ecclesia, we didn't use this term, but if you were going second, you could special summon it to your field right off the bat and then tribute it for a sword soul monster that you don't already have on the field, or just leave it on the field as a level four tuner, which comes in very handy if your opponent effect veil is your copy of Moyi, because then you can just put it on your side of the field or any of your sword soul monsters. If they activate an impermanence or anything so that they can't generate the token, you can just special summon this card to your side of the field if your opponent controls more monsters than you do to be able to synchro summon still, which is really, really good. So our next draw, we're going to draw into a copy of Ash Blossom, which isn't going to do us all that much good, but we do have the copy of Ecclesia that we can summon to our side of the field if we want to, to help us go in for additional plays, or we can just hold it to be able to just go in for game with these cards, which is just really, really awesome. Your graveyard is going to look a little like this, so you don't really have all that much that you want to go for, but I'm actually going to show you guys a quick little tech card that you can actually summon from the extra deck. So if your opponent makes you lose a bunch of life points with this particular deck, which is already down 12 1200 points but if you go down by a bunch of life points in this deck you can just use any level four plus an ash blossom that you normal summon like your copy of dragite to be able to synchro summon into a really powerful synchro monster called psychic end punisher now this card is really really good in the deck because it helps you out in a lot of different ways because this card has the ability that when your life points are less than or equal to your opponents then this synchro summon card is unaffected by all of your opponent's card effects which is really really insane which is just absolutely crazy that this card is unaffected by every single activated card effect. 
It also has the ability that you can pay a thousand life points, target a monster you control and one of the monster that your opponent controls or one card that your opponent controls and banish them. And at the start of the battle phase, you can make this card gain attack equal to the difference between your life points and your opponent's life points. So this card has helped me out a lot in a lot of duels to be able to go into because if I know if I can end game and I draw into something like an Ash Blossom, I can just get rid of a copy of Dragite or a copy of my Grandmaster to help me go in for this really, really powerful card. So let's go ahead and do another test hand and see what we can do for the next one because you guys see how powerful this deck is this deck is absolutely insane and just super fun to be able to play because you get easy combos like that all the time in this deck where you can go in for multiple sword soul monsters on your first turn it's really nice especially if you can summon out your copy of baron de fleur first because if you do summon out your copy of baron de fleur then you can actually walk through a nibiru which is really really awesome so let's go ahead and shuffle up the deck again and see what we can do. But the really cool thing about this deck is it can go first or it can go second because depending on what you draw into, it's super easy to be able to break a board in this deck. So let's go ahead and shuffle up the deck and see what we can do for the next one. So we're going to go ahead and draw into a copy of Ash Blossom. That's pretty good. A copy of Atahara, a copy of Ecclesia so we can get into any sword soul that we want, a copy of Ashuna and a copy of Vashuda. So this is a really interesting because the first test hand we drew into the majority of our sword soul monsters or actually every one of our sword soul monsters and this hand we've drawn three of the four tiny monsters that i play in this deck so this is kind of neat so what we're going to do is go ahead and special summon out the copy of ashuna to my side of the field this is a really good card to be able to summon to the field because you can basically just use this card to be able to link summon into your copy of monk and then bring out another tiny monster from the deck by banishing this card from the graveyard which is really nice to be able to special summon out those cards but it does lock you in for worm monsters for the rest of the turn now, there's other there's one other really interesting play that i'm going to show you guys before we go in full combo with this particular hand but if you open up these two cards you can actually go for psychic and punisher because you can special summon out this normal summon out this or special summon it depending on what your opponent has on the field synchro them together and if you know you can go in for game just make psychic in punisher it's really simple it's why i play this card in the deck is because you can use these two cards to go in for your copy of psychic in punisher which is really cool which is why this deck goes so well second it's because say your opponent activates a solemn judgment or something like that against a copy of ash blossom or a solemn strike or something that pays half their life points or you're playing against dynamorphia which is really funny to summon this card against and you just summon out are you basically have 4,000 more life points. This card will go to 7,500. That's really, really big. And if we do go second, this is going to be the next card that you're going to see, which is called by the grave to guarantee that you're going to get your plays rolling, which is really, really nice. So let's go ahead and go full combo with this hand. So what we're going to do is immediately special summon out the copy of Ashuna, and we're going to immediately link that card away. Once we link away the copy of Ashuna, we're going to go ahead and link summon into a copy of Monk of the Tenyi. Now, it's very important to keep in mind as you play this hand that you're going to want to use your Tenyis to the maximum effectiveness. So we're going to do is special summon out the copy of our Bushuda because we can normal summon out the copy of Atahara on its own or we can normal summon out the copy of our Ecclesia to our side of the field as well, which is really, really good. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and use the copy of Ashuna that's in the graveyard and banish it because this card has a really insane effect that if you control no effect monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. And if you control a face-up non-effect monster, you manage this card from your hand or graveyard to special summon out a Tenyi monster from your deck, except another copy of this card, but it locks you in for Tenyi monsters for the rest of turn, and you can only use each effect this card once per turn. So we're we're gonna go ahead and banish that card to special summon out another tiny monster from our deck which you can actually special summon out a copy of your Atahara from the deck and keep the one that you have in your hand or special summon out the copy of your water tiny if you want to set up the graveyard totally up to you I usually like to summon out the copy of the Atahara from the deck because I do have the Ecclesia in my hand that can help me step into some other plays like summoning out a copy of Moyi and then revealing the copy of Atahara in the hand to make two level eight synchro monsters so at this point, we're going to go ahead and synchro these two together and go in for a really good synchro monster, which you can kind of pick and choose which one you want to go for. Like you can go directly in for the copy of the Grandmaster, and then when you summon out Moyi, you can go in for something else like a copy of Berserker or vice versa. You can go in for Berserker first, but keep in mind as you play this hand, you're going to be able to lock yourself in. But let's actually go for Baxia because Baxia is a really, really good play in this hand because it has the ability that when this card is synchro summoned, you can target cards on the field 
build up to the number of different original attributes of worm type monsters used for this card Synchro Summon, which we had two. So you can actually use this card to bounce two cards on your opponent's side of the field, which is really nice. But since we're going first, that effect doesn't really apply. But once per turn, you can target one card that you control in a level four or lower monster in the graveyard and destroy that card on the field. And if you use special summon the other monster from the graveyard. So we can go ahead and use the effect to be able to bring back the Atahara to help us go in for a copy of Chow Fang, which will lock the opponent down for light monster effects. But you can also use the effect of your copy of Vashuda if you're going second to go ahead and banish the card and bounce a card on the field because you have your copy of Monk. So let's go ahead and synchro these two together because you're going to use the effect to be able to pop your copy of Monk and then special summon back your Atahara, which then will let you synchro summon these two together to go in for your copy of your Chow Fang. Now, depending on what your matchup is, this is gonna be a really powerful effect because this card will lock your opponent down from using light monsters effects because it has a really insane effect that when the single summon card is on the field, your opponent cannot activate effects on monsters with the same original attribute of Yang Zing monsters used for this card Synchro Summon, which we actually used Baxia, which is a light monster. So we locked our opponent down from light monster effects with this card, which is pretty good right off the bat. Now we haven't even normal summoned because what we did was a special summon out the Ashuna and then link it away for the copy of our monk and then special summon out the copy of Vashuda and then use the effect of Ashuna to special summon out the Adahara. So we haven't even summoned out a normal summon. So we can normal summon out the copy of Ecclesia, use her effect, tribute her because she lets you tribute her to special summon out any sword soul you want, which we're just going to grab a copy of Moyi. Moyi has the ability if it's normal or special summon, you reveal a sword soul or a worm monster, which is why I kept this in my hand, to be able to special summon out a token. So we're going to special summon out a token and then immediately synchro these two on the field to go for your Grandmaster. Usually when you see the Moyi, you're going to go for Grandmaster or Dragite to give you that spell and trap negate, depending on what you're playing against. So Let's go ahead and shuffle up the deck really quick because the Moe is going to let us draw a card from the top of the deck. So we're going to go ahead and draw into another copy of Ash Blossom. Not the best top deck, but it's okay because we have plenty of ways to stop the opponent in this hand. Now the copy of your uh, Sword Soul Grandmaster is going to go off and you can actually add from your deck to your hand your copy of Long Yoon because I'm not too worried about grabbing the Sacred Summit or a copy of Blackout because I have plenty of plays with this particular lineup. So we're going to go ahead and shuffle up the deck. Now keep in mind, you do have to go in for Worm Monsters because of that effect of that Ashuna that locks you in. So at this point we're going to go ahead and special summon out this by discarding the copy of the Atahara from our hand to the graveyard. Now this will generate us a token on our side of the field. Then we're going to go ahead and synchro these two together to inflict 1200 points of damage for the Long Yoon's effect and let us go in for a level 10 synchro monster. Which you can go ahead and summon out the copy of the Sinister Sovereign which will do an additional 2400 points of damage to the opponent which is really insane by using both of its effects because it has some really really good effects. If you guys didn't know what this card does, if this card is synchro summon or if another, or excuse me, if you synchro summon another worm monster while this card's on the field, then you can draw a card. And if your opponent special summons a monsters or monsters, then you can banish one of those monster or monsters. And if you do inflict 1200 points of damage to your opponent. And when your opponent activates a spell or trap card effect or effect at all, then you can quick effect banish that card. And if you do inflict 1200 points of damage to the opponent. Now we've already done 12 with this. You can do 12 twice with this. So that's 3600 to help you close out the game while also having the copy of the Grandmaster to be able to discard a copy or excuse me, to be able to use the ability that basically you can banish a sword soul monster or a worm monster from your hand or grave then target effect monster on the field and negate its effects well this is also locking down light so this is a really good field right off the bat that you can establish to be able to shut down the opponent i really like this field but you have two negates you have this that's going to be able to banish two cards and you have this that's locking down light now, if we go ahead and draw into the next card, we're going to draw into a copy of Infinite Impermanence, which is going to help us out a lot because it gives us an additional negate and helps us go over additional plays. But as you guys see, you have some follow-up plays with this deck, but your first three-ish Synchro Monsters is going to be where the game's going to go, which is really, really important as you play the deck. So let's go ahead and see what we can do for one more test hand and see what we can draw, because this deck is absolutely insane. It's super fun to be able to play, and I really love playing Sword Soul, because this deck is just really good 
good. I really like it. Um, and it's just really fun. Like I really like playing the deck a lot because you can go in for all sorts of crazy cool plays and just go in for game with all sorts of really powerful synchro monsters. So let's go ahead and see what we can do for our first test hands. So we're going to go ahead and draw into a copy of Ashuna, a copy of Blackout. That's already really good. So I know we're going to try and go for our Supreme Sovereign, a copy of Ecclesia, a copy of our Long Yoon, which we already have the way to go into it, and a copy of Effect Veiler. So this is already a pretty good hand right off the bat, but we have the copy of Long Yoon, and I really want to go for that copy of our um, Sacred Soul, or our copy of our Supreme Sovereign. So what we're going to do is go ahead and normal summon out the copy of Ecclesia, because I'm going to go ahead and tribute it and summon out a Moyi. Moyi is really important because I want to summon that card of the field, and the reason I'm not special summoning out the copy of the Ashuna is because I want to use it to discard for Long Yoon. So I'm going to go ahead and use the effect of Moyi to put a token on the field, which is really cool so then we can just reveal the copy of the Long Yoon in our hand, then go ahead and synchro these together to summon out the Grand Master. Now the Grand Master is going to help us out a lot because we're going to go ahead and shuffle up the deck. Mo Yi is going to be Chain Link 2 and our copy of Grand Master is Chain Link 1 to be able to block it so we make sure we get that search, which is very, very important to get that search. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and draw, which I'm going to draw into a copy of the Long Yoon, which I can discard that instead. But we're going to go ahead and search the deck for a copy of a Sword Soul card, which we can grab a copy of Summit if you want to grab a copy of Summit from the deck, since we already have Blackout to get us an additional revive from the deck, which is going to help us out a lot to be able to just get that revive. So what we're going to do at this point is I'm going to go ahead and use the Long Yoon to be able to discard to the graveyard a copy of Ashuna to be able to put an additional card on the field like a copy of a token. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and synchro these two together, and I'm going to summon out to my side of the field a copy of the Supreme Sovereign. Supreme Sovereign is really good because you want to combo it with your copy of Blackout as much as possible. So you also have that copy of the Sacred Summit, which can let you revive back from your graveyard a copy of a Worm Monster. So you can go ahead and use the effect of the Sacred Summit to bring back your copy of your Ashuna, and Ashuna can go ahead and use its effect to be able, or excuse me, you can link summon into the copy of your monk. Now this is actually possible because it has the ability that you can target a sword soul monster in the grave, or if you control a synchro monster, you can target a worm monster instead to special summon it. So we're gonna go ahead and special summon out the copy of the Ashuna instead to summon out the copy of monk. And then you have the copy of the Ashuna's ability that if you control a face up non-effect monster, you may just card from your graveyard to special summon out a tiny monster from your deck. So we're gonna go ahead and use the effect to be able to banish this card and special summon out to our field a copy of another Tenyi monster, which can be a copy of Vishuda that we can just leave on the field, which is really good because you can then banish it later to help you for more plays, which is really, really good. Or we can go ahead and use it to link summon right here for another play if you want to go for another play. A little bit of a clunky hand, but you have some really good plays that you can still establish because we have a negate here. We have a pop two and a banish two right here, which is really good. Banish from field and grave, a negate, a negate, and another copy right here to be able to pop two cards on the field. This card is really, really good in this deck. I really love Blackout in this build to be able to just pop two cards cards on the field. Use your copy of Supreme Sovereign. You always want to target Supreme Sovereign because it can banish any tiny monster that you want, or excuse me, any sword soul that you want to be able to use that ability, which is just really, really, really insane. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and let the opponent go. They're going to do whatever they want to do. We're going to go ahead and discard this card from our hand to say that we stop them from using a monster effect. Then we can draw into a copy of Emergence, which just gives us all of our plays all over again, because we can just go in. And this is where you start getting the follow-up plays that you can start using a Emergence. Emergence will grab a, a copy of Taiye, which you want to use later in the game, or a Moyi. Totally up to you which one you grab. And we're going to make an insane field. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and use the Moyi. Normal summon it to our side of the field. Moyi effect. Reveal the copy of Long Yoon. This will let us special summon a token to our side of the field, which is then going to get us a search which we're going to use these two on our side of the field to be able to go in for another copy of Grandmaster, which is going to give us even more plays. We're then going to use the Grandmaster to get a search and the copy of Moyi, which we're going to shuffle up the deck. And once we shuffle up the deck, we're going to get to draw a card, which hopefully is going to give us some more advantage, which we're going to draw into a copy of Call by the Grave. That's pretty good. 
we're gonna go ahead and draw another copy of Call by the Grave and then use the copy of the Grandmaster to grab a Sword Soul card, which I'm gonna grab the copy of Taie, which then I can discard for the copy of the Long Yun, which I actually kind of want to get this copy of the Vashuda off the field, which we're gonna go ahead and get this off the field by linking these two together on the field to go in for a copy of our Shaman. Now we're going to go ahead and use the effect of Long Yun to be able to put on our side of the field by discarding the Taie, special summon out to our side of the field, our token, and then synchro these two together. Do 1,200 points of damage to the opponent. I put those in the wrong spot. But we're going to go ahead and do 1,200 points of damage to the opponent and summon out our final Sword Soul monster. And then we have the Call by the Grave to back it up. We also have the effect of the Shaman that lets you discard a card and target a worm monster in the graveyard and special summon it. So we can even keep going if we want to, because you can just bring back another worm monster from the graveyard, like a copy of your Vashuda that can just go to the field if you want to and use it for another link summon, which is kind of neat to give you a non-effect monster to make it live in the graveyard. So we're going to go ahead and use the effect, link it away by discarding the copy of Call by the Grave, you can bring back the copy of the Vashuda, then immediately link it away because the link arrow points down and summon out our other copy of Monk. So that's pretty much you're gonna be your field. This is why this deck is tier one. This deck is hands down one of the best decks of the format. It's one of my favorite meta decks right now. It's super fun to play. You get these really insane fields that you can summon out all of this to your side of the field and just help you go in for game. This card was really good in the field because it's gonna give you a pop two, like an Icarus attack, banish a card from the field, banish a card from the grave. This is a negate, this is a negate. This is an effect that's gonna give you that ability to uh, do 2,400 points of damage to the opponent. This is gonna help you close out games. You've got 29, 3K, actually 31, dropping the opponent's monsters down by 100. This is gonna boost this card up because you're gonna be able to banish cards. And you also have the Vashuda that has the ability that you can banish it to be able to bounce a card so you can help you go in for game with a field like this this is one of the best fields that you can establish and it's just really a good deck i really love this deck it is well worth it it's super fun to play and you get these really insane fields and this is why this deck is tier one so that's going to do it for this one, guys. I really love this deck, as you guys have probably know by now. But this deck is just absolutely insane. If you guys would like to check out the deck profile, as always, for every deck profile or every test hand video, they are always down in the description down below. But let's go ahead and put these cards away. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Definitely tell me what you think of this deck down in the comments down below. And definitely comment down below what your favorite summoning mechanic is. Mine is Synchro Summoning, like I said, because you get to summon out all sorts of really crazy cards. So anyways, guys, this is Dark Arm Duelist. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell on there so you can come to our notification squad and we'll see you guys in the next video. See you later, guys.